New Mutants is directed by Josh Boone and is the latest spin-off of the former X-Men franchise that was originally produced by 20th Century Fox, now known as 20th Century uh, 20th Century Films and owned by Disney. Owned by now acquired by Disney. And this is now the uh, <clears throat> this is now the 13th and final. final final film of the original X-Men film from 20th Century Fox now known as 20th Century Studios and this film stars uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, Maisie Williams, uh, Charlie Heaton from Stranger Things, Alice Brega and among others and in this film it deals with a group of kids that are mutants, uh, teenagers and that are mutants that are held in this uh, as, as hospital that's facility and it pretty much as you've seen from the trailers there's some entity not going to go into spoilers just yet but let's just say they have to use their powers for good after they discover something is going on with the, with while they're, they're doing their time in the asylum yeah. now before we get into the film I just want to say that uh, to go into some backstory real quick the, the X-Men franchise, actually, to me, I think, there was at a time, the, the, I actually really enjoyed these movies. Uh, when they first started out, all, I actually consider myself not only a big fan of a lot of the films that they did, from X-Men 1, 2, Days of Future Past, Logan and all them, but even still, when I was a kid, I didn't mind the X-Men, I, I liked them, especially some of the cartoons I've watched and everything. I wasn't a hardcore fan of it, but I still admired them, and I, I appreciate a lot of the comics that I've heard are pretty good from it. So the movies themselves, uh, when they were originally going on by Fox, they they had a lot of great promise, you know, to really get us into this whole like ensemble. Because pretty much X Men, when the first one came out, it pretty much made it to where you could make an ensemble superhero film with big cast and stuff. Yeah. And there was a lot of promise in it. And not gonna go into too detail because we we said this in a lot of our other reviews, mm -hmm. but. After the last couple of years with the whole Fox merger with Disney, it seemed like their franchise after Logan pretty much fell short. Yeah. Other than Deadpool 2, after Deadpool 2 came out, our last two X-Men films pretty much showed that Fox just fucking gave up yeah, on they, this franchise. They, yeah, they fucking just gave up. I mean, yeah, people have problems with Apocalypse and stuff. So there's had, there has been some issues. Like, All right, a little backstory on me and my X-Men the, uh, story. Uh, I actually, surprisingly enough, being a super old fan, uh, I have never really been a big fan of the X Men. Uh, in fact, it took, uh, I probably said it in uh, our last Phoenix, Dark Phoenix Phoenix, review, yeah. uh, that I actually was a late bloomer when it, when these with these movies. And uh, uh, I, I've, I, I actually enjoyed the beginning, you know, when they were at a core coherent storyline they were good however there ha was like a down one with i think it was last stand wasn't it yeah <clears throat> and then we of course had war origins. origins and stuff like that which you know were kind of flat and stuff and then um uh, then of course you got days of feature past which was really good and had a good concept because i think uh, x-men at that time took a big hiatus so they wanted to kind of keep it all in the same world. Well, they but kind of they had to do a soft reboot. So yeah, they had to restart yeah. the timeline. Yeah, so we got the Days of Future Past because following well, a first class of yeah. success, that brought pretty much X Men back into yeah. making good movies again. Yeah. So Future Past was a way to bring back both of the original yeah. timelines and the the younger versions timeline of the. Or, the yeah, of they the were trying past. to do something clever by like kind of similar to what you saw in Star Trek, Trek the yeah, 2009 one. Yeah. Where they're keeping uh, promises to the other one, just in case they could bring them all together. And uh, while it is a good idea on paper, unfortunately, when it got started getting later on with, uh, especially with Fox and really with fucking Disney taking control and giving everybody giving the fuck up, these films kind of started declining. Yeah. After that. Now that's to say because after Logan came out, that show. Yeah. That but Logan, Logan, Logan was yeah. a, on an, another After, level. When yes. Le Logan, to me, I think stood it's as like the the, 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 the definitive last that could have been the last X Men movie. Yeah. And you could have ended there. Yeah. It but the promise that they probably would have had with this movie, the New Mutants, had an idea, a good idea on paper because what they were going to do originally was before the acquisition of Fox took over, 
back in 2017 when they announced that they were going to do this, they were going to make it basically like a horror film yeah. then superhero level. Yeah. And I'm all for the idea of them doing, you know, kind of like, because it's very akin <coughs> to, um, like, the, to doing a cross between Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors mixed in with, like, Breakfast Club. Yeah, see, something. that's what they were going to go for. It was going to be, like, kind of like um, Stranger Things uh, with teenagers with... Uh, <clears throat> Dream Warriors is what what really inspired the the original script <clears throat> and um, the whole like they wanted a very Breakfast uh, Club vibe and uh, they it was going to be a hard R and the trailers really really was, had everybody set hyped. the mood yeah and it set the mood with the Pink Floyd Wait, the wall no the big in the wall but yeah. uh, it was this movie was actually going to be really gruesome and it was going to be a very dark R. And they wanted to test this theory to see maybe a new genre could be in the making of superhero. Yeah, because Logan did that with a western type of uh, real kind of like grounded approach, yeah. taking a more grounded level, so to speak. So it, it, I, it, doing them doing a straight on horror movie at a superhero, that's a great fucking idea. I would yeah. love to them to have seen that. Yeah. And as we heard from behind the scenes, this was a film that took a long fucking time to come out because... Three years. Three years. It, it started filming yeah. in 2017. It had a release date set in, I think, April of 2018. Then, at the last accounts, the director decided that they were focusing on doing reshoots because because of it, uh, because of it Chapter 1 success, they wanted to make the film more scarier. So the intended idea was to do more reshoots behind the scenes to give it more of that horror feel, which, granted, that is a good idea. However, as time went on and be, with the acquisition of Fox and everything taken over and stuff, it put the, it it put, put, put the, the film, film in limbo. It did. It, it and had, it had so several fucking release dates got dropped. I mean, we were promised it maybe, I counted on occasion, eight fucking release dates. Yeah. And this is, came, like, example, The Awakening, where there was a film, like in The Awakening of the Amityville, which was so, made so long ago and took so long to come out that that character actually aged five fucking years. Yeah. So whenever you're watching this, you're technically seeing a lot of people in certain scenes. And I, a lot of it was reshot. Uh, thank God they didn't wait any longer, but they technically did age, you know, and yeah. a lot of stuff. But, but here's the funny thing was that after all the countless release dates and stuff, yeah. When news came around, it was I believe it was in January this year when they decided that they were finally okay, going to we're finally, March. Yeah. It, no, it was March this year. They finally decided to come out and release it. They well, said, we forgot. The let's, director let's said, keep it. Let's keep in. Uh, let's keep it in like uh, like order. Uh, then there was the, uh, this is where they get before the actual release date of this year. Then they fucking uh, now uh, one of the last re like release dates that we're gonna go for. They announced okay, we are gonna go with a fucking kid approach. They decided that PG either, I, I, I think what the intended was, because now I did read that the, the entire time that we had this, there was never any reshoots. So the director yeah. either changed his mind because of the acquisition of Fox or something, or he just wanted to deliver a product for the company and just deliver it there, or that was just false rumors. Because from what the director said, he never did any reshoots. That's what you see in the final film. And that's either a, that's that can be either a bad sign, depending on how it turns out, or a good sign, depending on if they would have fucked up on the reshoots. I don't know how a case may be, but honestly, you probably should have done the fucking reshoots because what they intended for as a horror film, what they should have done, you should have went with that approach. Okay, maybe I had it half half ass backwards, but the intention was for this film to be uh, like a, a straight nightmare on horror Elm Street. film. Yeah. yeah, it was gonna be a Nightmare on Elm Street. It meets Dream Warriors. And it was going to go for that approach. And, in fact, we were going to see, like, people getting, like, torn apart. And there are some creative-looking creatures in a way. Like, the little, probably only one little thing I'll give. But I, won't, I don't want to get to that point yet. Yeah, but, but yeah, the, this film had a release date of this year. And then, of course, the coronavirus, coronavirus happened. happened. And then yeah. there were rumors yeah. going around that eventually that, that because of all this stuff, the delay of film, many people just said, you know what? Just this point, just release on Disney Plus because there's really no point on putting it in theaters. Yeah. But unfortunately, because they were contractually obligated, they had no choice but to put it in theaters. So what yeah. we got was a colossal fucking mess yes. of a yeah. film um, that honestly, it was probably better off going to Disney Plus. Yeah, see, uh, they were going to release on Disney Plus, but then also they were going to release it like on stream and stuff. And, you know, people just said, give up, just give up, man. Just stop and just fucking release it. Fuck it. And just do what you did with Dark Dark Phoenix, piece of shit. 
just release it without care because it's going to be we're going to get rid of everything and start all over anyways yeah and of course they went ahead and did that and upon seeing this film my god i i already when a film's doomed like this we should already know there's you cannot ever there's never been a time ever a film was this badly doomed for many years and it's going to come out fucking looking good this film, I already went in low expectations, and it, it, it was exactly what I thought. It was a piece of fucking dog shit. There, this film should have just been should have just went with the scrapped, like they were going to go for. Because yeah. there was actually a time they were going to scrap everything, just throw this bitch in a trash can. Yeah. Honestly, should have done that. It, it, I mean, wasted. You just wasted everybody's time and money. It, it, this film was. This was horrible. This was. I, this is. To me, the worst fucking X Men World film of all time, uh, out of the entire fucking franchise. I yeah, personally I, n haven't in a while begged to leave a theater. I can almost, I can honestly say that while this film, I wasn't enraged by it, but I will yeah. say after upon seeing the film, this is the literally the only X Men film out of the entire franchise that literally, I was at fucking loss like. I had no reaction. I was like, yeah. what the fuck am I watching here? Yeah. This is such an empty movie. I have yeah. nothing to go off of. Yes. This, this is film, literally so fucking blah. This this film did what a spinoff should never do. A spinoff that goes so far that it almost feels like it has nothing to do with as to get the terms of, of the name spinoff. Because really, honestly, it felt like I was watching something that ain't even X-Men world related. Like, you, this could have been just some... Artemis Fowl type of shit, uh, and that's basically it because it does not feel anything of that origin. Uh, I just I was so empty. I didn't get what I was watching. I, I all I saw was just a script in a blender. Yep, and that's all. That's that's the best way of putting it. Nothing is very interesting. So here it is. I'll just get my one pro or a pro here real quick. Um, cool little design of that little creature guy with the smiley face. And T could have had potential, probably had some gruesome scenes with that guy. Yeah. Cool, you wasted him, thank you. Um, we, the, um, other than that... Um, some of the cast was... I mean, the cast was there. They weren't, like, great, but they, from what they had to work with, with I don't blame yeah. them. I, think I don't that blame them. I, I, I still think, I can see the intent they were trying to go, because the, the director did try to, you know, the performances they're giving... They at least try. They at least yeah. try to give it their all. And the fact, who the cast members, I will say that that, that I think really stood out for me the best was uh, Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. And I, I was kind of hit and miss with Anya Taylor Joy in this because there's things I kind of liked with her, but then her character made her really fucking unlikable. So it's kind of really hard to really get into her. So I'm mixed on her. But the other one I think stood out for me the best was. Uh, Charlie from uh, Stranger Things. So those two, I think, really stood out for me the best as far as them being on that kind of level, so to speak. Yeah. Like they're, that, they, they at least gave it their given it, gave it their best what they could work with. Exactly. Um, um, but other than that, other than probably some like cool designs on some of the creatures, creatures yeah. that could have been cool. And, that's all I got. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's really it. Like this movie was just such a fucking empty mess. I'm gonna tell you on my perspective on my con. I wanted to leave, leave leave the entire film uh beginning i already knew i was like oh my god this is gonna be fucking bad uh the uh it starts off just really badly ed edited and a quick just, just start in there it was thrown in there to give us our starter woman that we're gonna follow which is this little girl who brings dreams to this place that causes people's bad past to come haunt them other than that man Everything else, this script is nothing but just sitting around, talking, getting to know. And I honestly, not trying to bash their performances in any way, I was very uninterested of every little inch of this film. I didn't care for the characters. I didn't care for the fucking story. I was so bored, I fucking wanted to just go to bed in the fucking theater. I, the script was fucking horrible. It was empty. It was like literally fucking empty, like that cup right there next to him. I don't know if you can see, like, it, there was just, like, people will just, it was, like, not bad, it's not, I wouldn't say improvised, but it was just, like, guided script. 
yeah. so to speak. Like it there felt, was nothing was really planned. There wasn't. At all. It was just kind of thrown in there, and and and, and what that's where I get to my cons too. This movie has characters that. On paper, they may sound interesting, you know, like some of the, the the physical on the surface level. They have powers that could come in handy, and uh, I mean, well, well, I'm sorry, like some of their some of their like snippets of backstory that they could reveal could have yeah. went more into detail yeah, had we would have known more yeah. about them. Yeah, but, but unfortunately, it's all shorthanded because we yeah. don't really know about much of them. Yeah, there's no there's no coalition of story going on in this film. This this is just bare bones. Characters, just people thrown in this building, and uh, which I'll get. I don't want to keep fucking confusing uh, uh, going to another con without me talking to another con. So, yeah, it was just like there was no direction, like everybody was just getting to know each other. Bully, uh, one person was cool, and one did it. was just, just a bunch of just nonsense that didn't really make any sense. Then you have this doctor scenes where she's like trying to do studies on them and stuff like that, and she traps yeah. them and stuff. Which and there's is, just there's just a bunch of stuff going on. I'm not fucking caring. I, I it's a lot of exposition. To I felt like scary. I was watching Artists Foul all over yeah. again. It felt very fantasy like, but in a poor version like that. Um, honestly, that asylum, the location look. I will. I got a fucking complaint about this. It looked so fucking cheap. It looked like they went in the backwoods and found, like, you know, like, those paranormal people that go to, like, asylums and stuff yeah. and find them out in the middle of the woods. Well, sometimes they're not private property, and if they are, no one really fucking goes back there, so people walk in there anyways. It looks like they found a building and only needed, like, four or five people to come with them, and that was all that was really there. Yeah. Like, it felt fucking like, like, it felt like, a, like, you, like, you remember the guy walking, this is exactly a perfect example. Remember in 28... Days later, yeah. when he's walking, he's like, hello, hello. Yeah. I felt like that, not just because the theater was empty, but I felt like the world they're in is that empty. I'm like, man, there's nothing here. It feels like a fucking poorly made set piece. It does. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I, and I get it that they, that on, on paper, on the the secluded feel, you could, you could work into that possibly, but it still feels so empty to where there's nothing there. It's so hollow. That doesn't help when your whole film has nothing going with it either. Because throughout the, the first like hour or so, there's nothing fucking happening. There are you know snippets here and there of because most of the movie is them comprising of exposition dialogue where they're explaining about uh, each of the characters' minor like stories about each other. That's pretty much what we're giving because they fucking tell us instead of yeah. actually you know really going into detail with it. Yeah, everything. But, um, just but also tell us. Uh, even that, even with all the little nightmare sequences and stuff, like the small parts they put in there were about their tragic past. That's I'm supposed that's could that is supposed to work, but unfortunately it doesn't. Because they go in the wrong direction where, first of all, we don't hardly know who the characters are and there's nothing really about them that has like any type of like uh, interesting like pers well uh, interesting story to, to really delve into it. Yeah, the you know? it, the there this was so bare bones script I didn't even like it was just like the biggest blah I've seen in a while. And I'm just saying, and, uh, that. like, um, now getting more of my cons, uh, yeah, just like, uh, nothing blended together. I didn't really get this, you know, this spinoff and why it wanted to be connected to the other fi films. I didn't get the spinoff thing. There's no fucking, they actually, right, they went into this film trying to fix a bunch of shit and they just pretty much didn't know what the fucking direction they wanted to go. And honestly, it doesn't even feel like... I mean, there's no fucking really backstory. There is something... Uh, I know what you're trying to say. But it's still just so fucking, like, far away. They don't even try to at least connect something. Right, because there's nothing to really establish it. There, uh, there's no backstory into this film. Like, they're in this asylum. Yeah, and there's... And here's spoiler right here. War warning spoiler. They're in the place from Logan. The, the facility that teams yeah. that had that captured the kids in the the yes. Essex Corporation, the person the, the main doctor in this works for that company. Yeah. Here's a problem with this. Is this before or after? You gotta fucking tell us shit. You got to just you just can't have kids walk around talking and then some monster shit happens, some dream sequences happen, a doctor's trying to investigate and to fucking give us some like Arnold's foul climax shit that look out of a fucking fantasy movie with this big giant wolf. Look, what the fuck is like, this shit? It, it looked like the even more shittier look version of uh, <laughs> the 
the dog from Harry Potter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's just nothing. There's just it's just nothing. There's was nothing there. Yeah. I was like this in theaters, and I just honestly, I was on my phone, and I was doing this. I actually felt like I, because I'm kind of have like a, I'm kind of having a little bit of a down day, and thanks to Unhinge, I was kind of happy at that moment, but just everything, I, I, I'm like I said, I'm having a down day, and this film just gave me a state of depressed feeling. Yeah, and, and, it's, and, it's, and I just, I just wanted to leave. I wanted to just leave. Yeah, I got you. I, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, any other way, but. I honestly think this was this could have just been thrown in trash, man. There's it, nothing savior that's save to, there's nothing to save about it. Yeah, if yeah. now had you would have and the other yeah, that's what I'm saying, like the other problem I have with it too is the fact that not only is it so hollow and so empty, but also yeah. even with sticking this concept that it was supposed to go with the, with the mm -hmm. fucking horror approach, hardly even fucking use. They spend like the first hour doing mainly jump scares. This is less like Dream Warriors. Well, that's the problem, yeah. too. Not only is the jump scares really fucking obvious, but also, this is less like Dream Warriors and more like the poor man's version, uh, a really shittier version of One Flew the Cuckoo's Nest and, like, Breakfast Club combined. That is not good when most of your film is mainly just exposition dialogue and you're trying to go for that more teenager is feel type of feel, which could work in a better script with it, maybe. But, because the director did Fall of Our Stars, which was actually a pretty good movie, I liked. But still, that mentality, I think, wasn't blended well with the tone of the film. Because, had you would have gone with the whole horror movie type approach, it would probably would better. But yeah. no, this movie has the same problems I've heard from other people that said with Fantastic Four did. Where it's first hour, hardly any action, and then it's not until the last 10 or 20 minutes when we finally get a fucking climax. Yeah, the, this film had no middle. It was just basically one long uh, opening... And then, out of nowhere, I, like I said, I had a hard time paying attention because I just, most uninteresting, uninteresting, un I can't even say that word, interesting, um, fucking uh, everything that I could possibly think of of a film of a year. But uh, then they just, boom, 10 minutes, here you go. Uh, here's this boring. And it was so anticlimactic, here, here, uh, too. Here, here's this boring-ass climax. Uh, yeah, sorry, we don't give a shit. Um why did we release it? We don't know. We're fucking retards. <laughs> and not just that, but that climax too. Uh, spoilers. So fucking easy to take down. Because the whole point was that this girl, the main girl we followed, Danny, all she does is basically confront her fear. And it's trying to rip off it in a very bad way. Where she's basically trying to, she's trying to tame the beast, so to speak. And I'm like... That worked better in, I felt, in It, and even in, in uh, some other films that kind of do that approach. It did not work here because it, it made it was just poorly done. You know, it, it really had nothing to it that really... It was already... Not only was it very uh, short-lived with its climax, but it's just that they gave up. You know, they ran... It's almost like they ran out of time, and they just wanted and to fucking... speaking of give up, I already give up right now talking about this movie. I don't even give a shit. It's depressing me even more. This was a bad so, way to uh, go So, with that out. being said, I ain't got nothing fucking nice to say about this film. Fucking flatline and film freaks me to me. It's a piece of shit. Fair enough. Yeah, this is was a bad one to go. And thank out you with. for uh, ending the last the X Men franchise with two pieces worst pieces of shits back to back. Yeah, this is Dark Phoenix. <laughs> I'm honestly gonna say I thought Dark Dark Phoenix currently was the worst, but now this it just made it the worst. Yeah, this, it made Dark Phoenix a little bit better. Yeah, and so. <laughs> Hopefully, in the years following, we get a proper reboot uh, with what they do with with now that the it's it's going to be the current X Men movies are going to be part of the MCU. Hopefully, we see a resurgence. So, unfortunately, you went out with a bad fucking whimper. Horrible. You yeah. basically did the Batman and Robin equivalent. Of yeah, Super you just films. flipped off Hugh Jackman and all them. Yeah, what they worked hard for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that being said, um, because I was not like really. Because I found the film just very... It's bad, don't worry. It is very bad, but... Because I was just kind of in that very just... I don't give a shit mood, and I was just so, like, empty. I'm going I'm going by a hair here. I'm going by extremely, 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 extremely fucking low disaster rate on the Film Freaks meter. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's horrible, and it will make my worst of list, but... Oh, it's making it, my worst It is. List. It's making my worst of list, but... Yeah. I... There was still... I didn't have that overly anger like I, I should have with it. So, yeah. so yeah. For those of you who have also seen the New Mutants and the other X-Men movies as well, 
Uh, let us know in the comments below what you thought about it. Thank you so much for watching, and stay safe, and we'll see you in our next review. We'll see you later.